Hi, thank you for joining me in this video. I would like to take a closer look at the Assignable Hardware Framework, a new capability that we introduced with the release of vSphere 7. When we look at Assignable Hardware, it has two consumers of that specific framework, being Dynamic Direct Path AO and NVIDIA vGPU. Let's focus a little bit more on Dynamic Direct Path IO. This is a new capability and it builds upon the Direct Path IO capability we had uh, prior to vSphere 7. But Direct Path IO came with a lot of constraints on vSphere features like DRS and, uh, and vSphere HA, vSphere High Availability. Because we used to connect the hardware address of a PCIe device directly into the VMX file, the configuration file of a virtual machine. Now this was great for having direct access to that PCIe device, give you, giving you bare metal performance and a one-to-one -one relationship with that PCIe device, with that hardware accelerator. But whenever a host field uh, that was running a virtual machine connected to a PCIe device using Direct Path IO, there was no chance of recovering that virtual machine. Now with Dynamic Direct Path IO in vSphere 7, we reintroduced that capability for virtual machines connected directly to a PCIe device, a hardware accelerator like a GPU, like a FPGA or a NIC. So no longer are we exposing the hardware address directly to the virtual machine. We now have built a capability mapping in between. So we configure that virtual machine with a specific device, maybe a GPU model Tesla V100, or maybe another NIC or an FPGA. And DRS will integrate with assignable hardware to find a suitable host. It'll register that virtual machine on that specific host, claim that PCIe device that is configured for that virtual machine, and now power on that virtual machine. In the case of host loss, vSphere HA now at least has the option with dynamic direct path EO using the assignable hardware framework to re-register that virtual machine on the surviving host in the cluster obviously depending on PCIe device availability. We also have a optional hardware label that we can use to give DRS and assignable hardware a little bit more freedom or more configuration on that level on what host to choose and what PCIe device to choose. Let's have a close look at the UI and how you configure and use Dynamic Direct Path AL with assignable hardware. So here we have a demo environment. And in this specific lab environment, we have a couple of hosts that are equipped with a Tesla T4, for example. So if I go ahead and I go to a virtual machine and I, and I configure it with a new PCIe device, I'm presented with a couple of options. So I have the legacy direct path IO, NVIDIA vGPU, but for this specific demo, I want to use the dynamic direct path IO feature. Now, vCenter server with DRS will and assignable hardware will maintain a list of all the PCIe devices that are configured for pass-through mode in the cluster. And selecting hardware will show me all the different PCIe devices I have. In this specific case, all the hosts are equipped with the same GPU device. So it'll only list Tesla T4. And I can choose this and, and run the Tesla T4 like this, but maybe and for the sake of the argument, I want to configure a custom hardware label. So when you going to, um, to a specific ESXIOs to hardware and PCIe devices, it'll show me the pass-through enabled devices. And here you see the hardware label that we can now configure. Now this is fully customizable. And for this specific Tesla T4, I want to label it as a GP GPU device. Uh, because I know this Tesla T4 can do computational workloads. So let's go ahead and add that. And on the fourth ESX IOST, let's use a different hardware label. So maybe 3D XL. Because I want to utilize this host and this specific GPU for uh, 3D rendering uh, capabilities or something like that. So now, whenever I go and I edit my virtual machine to use that specific GPU, not only am I presenting with the option to, to just utilize a Tesla T4, but it'll also uh, show me 
the different hardware labels that I have set up. And by doing so, there's a lot of flexibility here in, in what you can uh, and how you can configure assignable hardware with DRS to use custom labels as well. Now, do remember that you will limit DRS and assignable hardware to that specific hardware label if you choose that. So let's go ahead and I want this specific virtual machine to use the GPGPU device. Another cool thing to know is that whenever you configure something direct path IO with Vs for 7, you must reserve all the guest memory, which is now done automatically. Um, let's configure the second virtual machine with a different, with a different uh, GPU and hardware label. So let's pick the 3D accelerator label. So just to show you that the current virtual machines are registered to the first ESXi host. And once we now power on that virtual machine, DRS will do its work together with assignable hardware to find that suitable host, claim that device and power on that virtual machine. Let's do the same for the second one. And what you'll immediately notice is that it is now placed on the third ESX IOS, the one that actually provides that hardware label. We can look in the, um, the vCenter server appliance and dig a little bit into, um, dig a little bit into the VPXD, the virtual provisioning X daemon logs. And we see some work going on here for, uh, for this specific virtual machine and what host it is registered to and what host it is now placed. But in the end, we do not really want uh, customers to the, to have the need to go into the logs, right? So whenever you examine that virtual machine and you'll take a look at the tasks and events, you'll actually be able to see a lot of information and um, the DRS is actually powering that virtual machine on and that it is now located or, or placed on the third ESXi host. Again, a lot of flexibility here and how to utilize PCIe hardware accelerators and definitely a great new feature with vSphere 7. Thank you for watching this video.